Okay, here we go, page 55, 56 in your packet. This is the 3-4 additional practice. Uh, looking at linear functions, writing linear functions, slope, y-intercept, all this stuff you guys already know. Number one, graph models. The depth of water in a small fountain during a rainstorm. Well, I wonder what would happen to the amount of water in a small fountain during a rainstorm. Uh, goes down? Huh, goes up. I wonder. It's raining, so the amount of water increases. Interesting. What is the y-intercept? Well, that y-intercept right there. That y-intercept, 6. Now, what does that mean about the fountain? Okay. Before it started raining, there were how many inches of water? 6. Okay. So, before it rained, the fountain had 6 fountain had six inches of water in it. Boom! What does the slope represent? Well, slope is a unit rate. It's how many inches of water. Okay, the depth of the fountain per hour. How many inches per Hour. Okay, because we are comparing these two variables together. Y variable compared to the X variable. So inches per hour. So write a linear function. Well, to write a linear function, we need to know the Y intercept and we need to know the slope. Well, to find the slope, let's find two ordered pairs. I'll use this ordered pair, 0, 6. This ordered pair, which is over 2, and up 9, over 2 and up 9. Well, do your subtraction. Hmm. 9 minus 6 on the top, 2 minus 0 on the bottom. I took my big Y value minus small. That gives you 3 over 2. 3 divided by 2, my friends, is 1 and a half. What does that mean? It is gaining 1 and a half inches of depth in that fountain per hour. So write the linear function, y equals, there's my slope, one and a half, plus my y-intercept, I started with six inches of water. Good stuff, let's move on. Uh, number five, yes. The graph shows the outdoor temperature on a certain winter day starting at sunrise. What do the slope and y-intercept of this function represent? Well, the slope, what does it represent? Hmm. Well, it is the temperature per hour after sunrise. Temperature per hour after sunrise. And again, we're just comparing our y variable to our x variable. Okay, what does our y-intercept represent? Well, again, that's this value here. What does it represent? It represents the temperature at sunrise, at the beginning of the day, or when this graph started. This graph started at sunrise. So this is telling us the temperature at sunrise. Write a linear function. Okay, well, i got to know my slope and my y-intercept. Well, my y-intercept, let's start with that one. That one's easy. Boom, we already said it. It's 4. Starts right there. 4. 4. 4. Okay, now we got to find a slope. Well, we know one point, 0, 4. I need a second-ordered pair. Hmm, over 1, that looks like a good one. Over 1, up 8. Over 1, up 8. Big Y value minus small Y value. 8 minus 4, 1 minus 0. I like easy numbers. 4 over 1. What does that mean? It is gaining 4 degrees per hour. So, write the equation. Slope 4. That's supposed to be an X. Plus... Your y-intercept of 4. So 4x plus 4. There you go. Trying to make this quick. Let's go. Now we get a right equation. 
for each one of these. Sweet. Gosh, I love this. Okay, let's find the slope. Let's find the y-intercept. Then we'll put it into the equation. Well, start with the y-intercept. There it is, four. Now, let's use the two ordered pairs that they gave us. Okay, this is the point zero, four. And this over here would be the point five, 14. Same thing. You guys know how to find slope. Subtract on the top. So big minus small. Do 14 minus 4 on the top. 5 minus 0 on the bottom. That leaves me 10 over 5. Now 10 divided by 5, Mr. Fricky, is? 2. 2. So our slope is 2. Function, y equals, there's my slope, 2x plus Quattro. my y-intercept of 4. 2x plus 4 for that linear function right there. Looking at the next one, okay, same type of thing, but uh-oh, looks like this one's decreasing. That should tell us something about our slope. That's right, negative. So let's find the y-intercept. Looks like it crosses right down there at negative 5. So I'm going to give slope, or I'm sorry, y-intercept of negative 5. Now let's find the slope. Well, we've got this point, which is the point 0, negative 5. Let's find another nice ordered pair. Hmm. I'll just use that one. Which is the point negative 2, positive 1. Now we've got a little bit more work to do on this one. Okay? Let's take the big y value minus the small y value. So 1 minus a negative 5. That would leave me with negative 2 minus 0. Well, 1 minus negative 5 is 6. There's your double negative. Add them. Negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. Now, 6 divided by negative 2? Negative 3. There's my negative slope. That's what I thought. So, put it into function. y equals slope negative 3x plus, well, let's not do plus. Let's just do minus 5. Yeah, minus 5. We could have done plus a negative 5, but let's just subtract 5. Okay? All right, moving on. I bet you we get to write some more linear functions. I love linear functions, Mr. Bill. I knew it. I knew it. Gosh, this is wonderful. Carla, saving money for a trip this summer. She already has some money in her account. That's good. Smart thinking by Carla. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll add the same amount to her account each week. That sounds like a constant rate. So it's going to be a linear function. Sweet. At the end of two weeks, Carla had 130 bucks. At the end of eight weeks, she has 280. Write a linear function in the form y equals mx plus b, where the amount of money m that Carla has saved after w weeks. All right, so let's find the slope. Now, I can't use the variable m to represent slope because they want to use the variable m for money. So what are we going to do now? Oh, my. Somebody help me. I don't know what to do. What we got? Well, they said to use the letter M for money. What do I use for slope now? Mm. What letter? I hate using the letter S because that looks like a 5. I, I'm, I quit. How about we use... How about an R for rate of change? <laughs> I knew I could think of something. Rate of change. All right, so we got two points. One point is the point 2, comma, 130. After two weeks, she has 130 bucks. Eight weeks, $280. All right. Find the slope for your rate of change. Big minus small. So let's do 280 minus 130. There are my two y values. 8 minus 2 on the bottom. This gives me a 150. This gives me a 6. 150 divided by 6 is 25. My rate of change is 25, which just means she's saving $25 each week. Now, we got to figure out how much money she started with. Does it tell us? No. That's where we got to use the fancy Mr. Freaky way. I need a y value, a slope, and an x value. Which one of those points you want to use? Let's use a small one. x value, y value. 
130 in there for y. Our rate of change or slope is 25. Our x value for 130 is 2. And now let's solve. 25 times 2 is 50. Well, 50 plus what number is 130? We would use subtraction to figure that out. That leaves you with Carla. She started with 80 bucks because that's her initial value, 80 bucks. Now write the equation. I gotta, I gotta clear some stuff out here. We're uh, you need some room there, Mr. Knowles. Need some room, so I'm just gonna write it right here. Yeah. Uh, put it in purple. Now they wanted to use M for the amount of money, so the amount of money she has is equal to our rate of change, which is 25 times the number of weeks plus how much money she started with. So 25W plus 80. There is your slope that, that relates the amount of money with the number of weeks for Carla. Okay, Mr. Frankie said skip that one, whatever yep. this is, number nine. So we're going to number 10. I knew it. We get to write some more function. A family went to a baseball game. This must have been before COVID. Cost to park, the car was $5, and the cost per ticket was $21. Oh, I like these. I like me questions like this. Huh. Well, hmm. we can find the slope and y-intercept directly from this information. We don't even have to calculate none. What's the cost before you buy any tickets? Well, you have to park. That cost, your initial value, 5 bucks. Zingo. Now, your rate of change. The more people go, each person is going to cost how much more money? $21. Now, it says write it in the form of y equals m to mx plus b. y equals 21x plus 5. $21 per ticket plus your $5 initial value or your initial cost. Plus a, can you see? Here we go, number 11. Come on, you can make it a little bit bigger. Yeah. Jose weighed himself on Monday and weighed 170 pounds. Two weeks later, he weighed 165 pounds. Okay. Hmm. Write in linear function in form y equals mx plus b to model Jose's weight loss. He's losing weight. It's going down. Where X is the number of weeks and Y is Jose's weight. Assume a constant weight loss over the two weeks. Constant rate of change? Constant rate of change. What? Now, do you think this is like his starting point? Yes. Like this is where he started weighing himself. So, I know it says Monday, but I'm going to use this information to write an ordered pair. So, are we in agreement? He started at 170 pounds? And then after two weeks, he weighed 165. Yep. So we could two, write two weeks later. We could write the order pair two and 165. Yep. All right. Well, we need to find slope. Find rate of change. I can do that in my head, Mr. Noel. I got it already. All right. Well, you're smarter than most. Yeah. Okay. Slope. Initial value. Well, how much did he weigh at the beginning? 170. 170. There's my y intercept. Slope. Y minus Y, I'm going to do it here, 170 minus 165. That's 5. 2 minus 0? Two. 2. 0 minus zero. 2. 0 okay. minus 2. He's got a weight loss. we got to have we a gotta negative have a, yeah, value. Yeah, negative. I didn't, yeah, yeah. Five, minus, 5 divided by negative 2, there's my negative slope, negative 2 and a half. Okay, he's losing 2 and a half pounds per week. Equation form, y equals negative 2 and a half x plus 170. 70. Bam. Nice job, Mr. Knoll. Thank you. Letter B, if he continues to lose weight at that same rate, how much will he weigh after five weeks? Well, this is his weight. So the y value is his weight. x is the number of weeks. So I'm going to use our linear function. Negative 2.5x plus 170. And I am going to substitute 5 into this equation for x, since it represents the number of weeks. Well, this, hmm, 
That's negative 12 and a half, my friend. Okay. Now, if I add negative 12 and a half plus 170, that is 157 .5. and a half. So after five weeks, he would weigh 157 and a half pounds. Okay, that wraps up the additional practice. Hopefully it helped. Turn in your book, or I'm sorry, go to your computer, do the 3-4 Math XL before you do your bookwork. Have a great day.